Hi Taurus, Sun, Moon, Ascendant, or Venus, this is Dane, and I'm going to be doing your November 2021 full moon reading for you. Now I ask if this reading resonates with you, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. If you're interested in any of the cards that I'm using, they will be listed and linked in the description box below. Now before we begin this reading, let us clear the energy space, raising our own energy vibration and releasing any negativity. Let's take a nice deep breath in. Exhaling whenever it feels comfortable for you. Releasing all negativity from a body like storm clouds. Letting yourself feel calm, centered, and at peace as we enter into this safe and loving space. Let's let the bowl sing as we see what the tarot has to say. How will Taurus be affected by the November 2021 full moon? Angels and spirit guides, show me clearly. Guide this reading and show me clearly. Angels and spirit guides. Angels and spirit guides, show me clearly. Guide this reading and show me clearly. Angels and spirit guides. Angels and spirit guides, show me clearly. Guide this reading and show me clearly. Angels and spirit guides, angels, and spirit guides, show me clearly. Guide this reading and show me clearly, angels, and spirit guides, angels, and spirit guides, show me clearly. Guide this reading and show me clearly, angels, and spirit guides, angels, and spirit guides, show me clearly. So at the bottom is our rooted self, the left hand side is our inner self, the middle, our heart, our emotional self, the right hand side, the public arena, the public self. So let's see what the cards have to say. We have the world and we have the lovers, which is Gemini energy. Now if we're born on the cusp with Gemini or we have Gemini within our natal chart or within our lives, they're coming through very powerfully at our root. Then we have our inner self which we have the Queen of Cups, Water Sign Energy, Pisces, Scorpio, Cancer. This is, the sun is in Scorpio, so this is a powerful time for us, so that energy can also be amplified during this time. And then we have the Page of Swords, amplifying the Gemini energy, but also Air Sign Energy, Gemini, Libra, Aquarius, coming forward. If we have these within our natal chart or within our lives, again, they come forward and have an impact on our inner selves. Then we have our emotional selves, we have the Page of Wands, which is Fire Sign Energy, Aries, Leo, Sagittarius. If we're born on the cusp with Aries or we have Fire Sign Energy within our lives, again, comes through very powerfully at our <laughs> emotional self. Then we have the Emperor, which is Aries Energy coming through right here very, very strongly. And then we have Justice, which is Libra Energy, again, amplified by the Page of Swords. So if we have this within our natal charts, within ourselves, we're going to see within our lives that Aries and Libra can come through very powerfully here emotionally. We have the Ten of Pentacles and we have the Sun in the public arena. I mean, what better could you ask for? You really couldn't ask for better in the public arena. You have prosperity and success that lasts for generations and we have the happiest card in the whole entire deck with the Sun. So this is absolutely beautiful. Let's look at the energy we have to be mindful of. Angels and Spirit Guides, show me clearly. Guide this reading and show me clearly, angels and spirit guides. It's the Queen of Pentacles, Earth sign energy, Taurus, Virgo, Capricorn. Now this full moon, which is also a lunar eclipse, is in Taurus, meaning it impacts us hugely, hugely during this time. And so what we might have to be mindful of is getting in our own way as everything is coming at us, as this moon is astoundingly intense. And we also have to be mindful that this moon will be intense. Other people might be able to kind of coast by with this moon or, you know, not feel as impacted. We will not be one of those people. It's intense, it's powerful, and we're going to find that it really does 
it does stay with us. It really does impact us in a, in a very real, very opened way. It moves us to our chakra energy. Angels and spirit guides, show me clearly. Guide this reading and show me clearly. Angels and spirit guides. And this is personal power. This is a solar plexus chakra. This is us learning to listen to our gut. This is our power, our intention, our focus really coming forward. And we're finding ourselves stepping into ourselves, into our, our role, into the place that we want to be. We're also going to find that this moon, because we're so intertwined with it, is astoundingly powerful for us as it is an astounding moon. So let's talk about this astrologically before we talk about this tarot wise or, you know, and see how everything connects with the tarot. Everything is woven together. Now, on the 19th of November, we have the lunar eclipse, the full moon lunar eclipse in Taurus, which again, amplify is amplified for us because we are Taurians. Everything is more intense when it comes to a lunar eclipse already. So this just kicks it up a notch. So do be prepared for this. As in all full moons, the sun is opposite the, the moon, which brings with it all, which brings all relationships into sharp focus. All of a sudden, our relationships, the, the people that we're connecting with, they, they come into, into life. They come into the realm of our being so much more than maybe even they have before, as well as making us much more aware of opposing fo forces in our lives, what we want to do, what we need to do, what other people want to do, what we want to do, our work and our home, you know, everything that seems to be in contrast with each other comes, comes up during a full moon, or we see it more during a full moon. We're also a lot more emotionally aware and are more spiritually and personally plugged into our, our wants and our needs and our way of living and what we desire. A lunar eclipse represents a resetting, a resetting, a restarting, yeah, of our emotions. It's kind of like all of a sudden the past six months, the, the challenges that we face, the baggages, the baggage that we have, the, the intensity that we're carrying over the past six months it gets released and it's like, okay, the reset button has been pressed. We feel a little bit easier, a little bit lighter, a little bit more at home with ourselves. So the full moon is in Taurus, which we already know. And we also know that Taurus is the second sign in the Zodiac. Now this means that it is naturally aligned with the second house, which represents the material the material world, material things, material life. You know, it represents our life. It represents our breathing. It represents our food, our bodies, our well-being. Everything that we are is represented in the in the second house. Our our tactile, you know, existence on this earth. We are going to to see here that we are being told to pay attention to the quality of things, not the quantity of things. So ju just be aware of that. The sun is in Scorpio, which is the eighth sign in the zodiac, and this means that it is naturally aligned with the eighth house, which is the house of regeneration and death. So the death, I know people get all concerned, but death is the opening of a door to another world. And so we can find the dying way of the old self, the rebirth of the new is such a powerful part of who we are as we're existing, as we're claiming, as we're standing in this material world, as we're, you know, embracing our Taurian energy, as we're embracing the sensual, beautiful, you know, expressive beings that we are. As the second house in Taurus has us focusing on the material world, the eighth house in Scorpio has us connecting with the spiritual world and the esoteric side of things. So this is a time where the spiritual and the earthly really start to dance together. These two needs, these two need to be balanced and these two needs come out in us more and more. Taurus and the second house also has us linked with mother earth and we're and what we're earning, how we're providing for ourselves, how we're stabilizing our waking world. Well, Scorpio in the eighth house is linked with the banks and how we are able to save once we have taken care of everything, once we have everything lined up. It doesn't have to be the banks, Just that's just the most kind of easy thing to visualize. It's however we're saving, however we're building, whatever we're investing in for our, our future. The moon is going to be squared Jupiter. Now this brings hopefulness and enthusiasm into our lives, though it is also amplifying the emotional response to things. So we have to keep our minds opened and keep our minds aware of our hearts and our reactions because we can kind of jump to conclusions and, and 
respond a little bit too intensely to things. So just be, be mindful of this. We are going to have a tendency towards moodiness, irritability, and carelessness. So again, that's just something to be aware of. And because this is astrologically speaking, everybody's going to have an inclination towards this. Everybody's going to be a little bit crabby, a little bit moody, a little bit irritable, you know, we are entering into the winter. If we're in the Northern Hemisphere, things are getting cold, uh, colder. We could find that we get colds, that we feel a little bit achy. So just being aware of this and other people is going to be important. We are also being told that by adopting an attitude of gratitude and spirituality, spirituality, not materialism, we will be seeing our world transform. We're going to be seeing doors start to open that weren't open before. Jupiter also urges us to expand our horizon, but to be mindful of greed, to be mindful of wanting more and more and more and pushing out those barriers. The moon is trying Pluto also. Now during this time, the moon is also trying Pluto, which this brings us that spiritual and emotional sensitivity as well as enhancing and bringing forward our psychic presence. So we can start to see the world, and that's why it comes through very, very powerfully in our inner selves. Much more real, much more open than we have seen the world before. This is also a time where we need to trust our gut, you know, trust the power that's that's rising us up within us. We will be feeling things very powerfully. That's a theme during this time. We feel things astoundingly powerfully, which makes us more emotional, it makes us more sensitive, makes us more connected to the world. And so that's going to be something that's, that just is during this time. We have to take care of our hearts. We have to be mindful of our hearts and that our hearts are really quite extraordinary. There's a subconscious urge towards the evolution of the self at a spiritual level, and in, and this is empowered and energized by Jupiter, helping us to achieve our goals and align ourselves with our karmic destiny. There's a sense of, I see the bigger picture. Now, that can be because with the moon trying Pluto, that our psychic development is coming forward. We're seeing things much more clearly. We're seeing things much more intensely, and all of a sudden, we start to see our karmic path. We start to see the way that we, we want to move forward within our lives. Now, the, the eclipse aspect pattern is quite interesting. So what this is, is this is the alignment of the sun, the moon, Jupiter, and Pluto. They create a quadrilateral, I have a hard time saying that word, so just bear with me, a quadrilateral, go with it, known as the animated figure. Now what this does is it animates our lives. It helps us bring things to life and that's why it's named as such. So what we're going to see here is that this doesn't mean that everything happens easily or that everything happens all at once. What it means is that it does bring things to the surface, things that need to be animated, things that need to come to life, things that need to move forward, start moving forward, start coming together, either physically or mentally. And we've we're more able to tap into this energy. We're more able to create and, and build and grow. It's kind of like layering clay. You know, we're more able to make things real. And that's just the imagery that spirit is giving. Just, just be mindful because we're all going, we're all going to have this all or nothing mentality. We're all going to have the sense of I'm jumping in head first, you know, feet first, going after it. And if it doesn't end up perfect, I want to walk away. Like I'm going to be done. I'm going to be frustrated. I'm going to be angry. I had all these hopes, all these intentions, and now everything isn't just right. And so I'm done with it. So what spirit is saying here is be mindful of that energy trying to take over and, and don't give up on yourself because there's so much, there's so many beautiful things coming to the surface that sometimes we can just not know how they, they interact with each other, how everything comes together in this beautiful harmony. Now the fixed star Algog. So it's A L G O L. Al Golg. This represents the head of Medusa in the constellation of Medusa, who is killed by Perseus. Now, this is an interesting star to say the least, and not one of my favorites, because astrologers call this the most evil star in the heavens, which is, is a heck of a name. You know, it's a, a heck of a role to, to have to live up to. So what we have here is a tendency towards violence and extremes and misfortune. And so we just need to be careful. Because what this does is that if we don't come to things with a high energy vibration, if we're not taking care of ourselves, if we're not tuned in to us spiritually, which is what this moon is trying to get us to do in the first place, we're going to find that we can just fall into chaos. We can just, you know, lose our heads about things like that. that that's literally it. You know, we can, it can make us 
lose our heads, lose our focus, lose our connection to who we are and where it is that we want to be. And it can bring greed to the forefront. And we've already been warned throughout this whole entire time that we need to be mindful of greed taking over. That's what the moon squared Jupiter is all about. You know, that's even when we're stepping into the Taurian power and our beautiful Taurian power, we're being told connect with the material, but don't let it overpower us. So that's going to be something that's very, very, very important during this time. Because if we, if we move towards greed, it's going to be something that we regret. It's going to be something that we're just like, wow, I can't believe I did that. You know, great. Awesome. So now let's look at what the tarot has to say. Our world is opening. Our world is opening in a very real way. Why? Because this moon has us connecting with ourselves in a very honest way, in a very open way, probably more honest and more open than we've seen astrologically or we've seen even tarot wise before. And so as the world opens, we say, where do I want to stand? How do I want to move forward? What do I desire? What do I want? What do I need? And so the world opens to us and we start to open to our world. We start to say, wow, you know, I sold myself short there or I didn't believe in myself here. And now I'm starting to change the game. Now I'm starting to lead me forward in a very real way, in a very honest way, in a very open way. And that's bringing the passion back to our existence. But it's also saying that we're starting to fall in love with not what we think we're supposed to fall in love with, but what we truly want, need, and desire within our hearts. Things start to open to us emotionally. Things start to open to us spiritually. And we're going to need to check into our heart because our heart is actually this kind of like badass ruler of what we desire. And it's saying what passion leads you forward. What What is it that you love within your world? What is it that you want within your world? How do you embrace your heart, your soul, and yourself? So we're falling in love and we're embracing that love. We're embracing that beauty. We're embracing that understanding of ourselves. And as we do so, it's not what other people expect of us. It's what we really want and desire within our world. There can actually be a bit of a problem as we are opening up to the world of trying to live up to everybody else's expectations or taking what everybody says and saying, oh, well, I should be like this and then I should be like this and then I should be like this. And then we're just one confused jumble because they're going to be contrary opinions, even from the same person. And they're going to be the sense of, well, what if those aren't my talents? What isn't that? What if that isn't where I'm supposed to be? How am I supposed to make myself into something that I am not? And we can try. We most definitely do. That's usually what our teenage years are about or in even our 20s. But as we start to step into ourselves more and more, as we start to embrace our voice and find our voice, we look at the page of swords and we become a student of our of our voice, of our mind, of even our hearts. It's like our hearts and our mind are coming together and it's saying, where is my passion leading me? What is it that I desire? And how is it that I open this door? How is it that I go after what it is that I want? So with the page of swords, we become the student again of our voice. We become the student of our mind. We become the student of our words. And why that's reiterated here is spirit is saying we're not supposed to be the experts or the masters or, you know, the scholars of it. What we're supposed to be are the discoverers. And as we move forward in that discoverer mentality within ourselves, as we're opening up that door, we're starting to see that we can think in different ways. We can speak in different ways. We can express ourselves in different ways. And we're not limited. There are old expectations that hold onto us. A sense of this is what is right and proper, and this is how I should move forward, and this is what isn't. Now, we can have a rebellious spirit and want to go for what isn't and want to walk down that path. But what we're going to see here is that even following the path of rebellion and the steps that other people have taken is still walking somebody else's path. What we need to follow is who we are. What we need to move forward is in a contradiction so that people look at us and say, how interesting, how unique, how why can't I put you in a box? And that's going to be one of the challenges we have during this time, Taurus, is that people are going to want to put us in that box. People are going to want to say, oh, you're just like this, or oh, you're just like that. And yet they're not going to be able to, which I find terribly funny. And it's, it's just going to be something that we chuckle about a little bit, where we sit there and, and look back and think, hmm, you know, you tried to define me, and yet I was beyond definition. And that isn't meant to be said in a a haughty way. What it is meant to be said is in a way that says, I have to stop defining myself as well. And so it moves us to the queen of cups. It moves us to love. It moves us to passion. It moves us to our hearts and what we're nourishing within ourselves. And as we're embracing our hearts and as we're embracing what we desire, as we're opening up to what we love, we're seeing ourselves move forward more and more. We're seeing ourselves embrace what it is we want within this world. And the changes of our world and the changes of ourselves and the changes of what we desire as we move forward in love, 
as we're connecting emotionally. Now, this also connects us with the sun in Scorpio. It has us looking at things that were secret before, that were hidden before, that we might not look at because we think, oh, no, 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 it's it's not time. It's not place yet. And Spirit is saying, now is the time and now is the place. Now is the time and the place to embrace this passion and these insights and these ideas and to break down these barriers. And it moves us to the page of, of wands. It moves us here to being from being the queen of what we love and the queen of our emotions and our hearts to the student of our passion and we're going to be a little shaky on this it's like am i allowed to let my passion fully come forward we're going to be getting messages from spirit so keep our minds opened for for the messages like keep ourselves connected now i see this mostly coming through our psychic perception during this time our way of seeing what everybody else can't always see or always understand but what we're also going to be seeing here is that this passion guides us this sense of who I am and what I want and what I need leads us forward. We're going to be looking at things in a completely new light. And the fact that we have two student cards coming forward is, is powerful for us because Taurus, we like to discover. We like to learn. We, we get bored. We get restless when we think we've, we've figured it all out. And that's where we can kind of fall into a rut. And so here, as we're embracing the passion of our hearts and our souls, as we're looking at things in different ways, we're going to be connecting again with the passion of why we get out of bed in the morning, the passion of who we are and where it is that we want to be and what we desire within our lives and you know how we want to move forward and how we don't want to move forward. And as we're connecting with this, we start to claim the throne. We start to claim our voice. We start to claim our authority. And as we're claiming our voice and our authority, we're claiming ourselves, we're seeing ourselves, we're moving forward in the place that we want to be. The emperor is not one to be bossed around. Like, you know, the only authority over the emperor within, within the tarot is the representation of ourselves, and that is the Hierophant. The Hierophant represents Taurus, and so here we have our eternal power, the power that we connect with, being stronger than that of the emperor. And so as we're moving forward, it's almost like nobody tops us. Nobody's stronger than us. Nobody's, you know, more than, than what we are. And as we're embracing this, as we're embracing the, the way that we're moving forward, we're finding that there's a strength and there's a beauty to ourselves and to our souls that, that transforms us, that moves us forward in love and laughter and, and brilliance. And that has us really connecting to our hearts and where it is that we want to be. And this comes from the fact that we're claiming our authority, we're claiming our purpose, we're claiming who we are, and we're also being just with this. So as we're claiming the emperor, as we're embracing this determination, as we're kind of being bolder and larger than life, justice comes in. And we can think, okay, now I just have to be just to everybody. I have to share the wealth, I have to share the prosperity. And yes, that's all well and good. But what we also have to be is discerning. We have to be discerning with who we let into our lives and how we let them in. We have to be discerning about the connections that we have and the way that we're moving forward and what it is that we desire from our lives because we can we can become so interested and so almost obsessed with being just to everybody else that we forget to be just to ourselves. And this is a time where we need to look at the energy that we need within our lives. We need to look at what builds us up, what moves us forward, what connects with our hearts and our souls. And that becomes the thing that is is the game changer here that becomes the thing that accelerates us to the next level and what what happens is that it leads us to the ten of pentacles it leads us to this place of prosperity and success it leads us to this place of bounty and abundance the ten of pentacles is a generational blessing instead of a generational curse all of a sudden we're starting to connect to what our ancestors wanted us to have, to what you know our past life selves wanted us to have as we're moving forward, the sense of worth, the sense of power, the sense of dignity, the sense of respect, the sense of there is more to me than meets the eye, and there will always be more to me than people understand. And so with the Ten of Pentacles, we start to pass this on to the next generation. It doesn't mean that we have to have children or want children. What it means is that we start to pass this on to the world around us, to the people that we're connecting with. And there's a sense of, of wealth here. There's a sense of entitlement to prosperity, meaning that I don't have to suffer. I don't have to suffer. And so often we're raised in environments where money is an issue. So often we're raised or we, we fall in love with somebody where money is an issue for them. We might have been perfectly fine. Then we fell in love with them. And now we're in a shambles. So here with the Ten of Pentacles, we're looking at us reclaiming our prosperity. 
We're looking at bounty coming forward. We're looking at success and security and stability and just feeling centered within our world. And that becomes beautiful. And we need to take steps towards this. It doesn't always happen overnight, though I do wish that it would upon each and every one of us. But what happens is that we start to see our worth and our value more and more. We start to change the way that we look at things. We start to change the way that we define things. And all of a sudden, we're moving in the direction that is more to us than we realize, that is aligning us with our greater destiny, even if we didn't realize this before. And it brings us to the sun. It brings us to happiness. It brings us to success. It brings us to prosperity and just a brilliance. Now, will people take us by eyes because the sun is shining on us? Yes, they will. Because whenever we see somebody who's truly happy, there's always somebody who has to poke that. There's always somebody who has to be grumpy and angry and, and you know, just not in the right energy vibration within their lives and, and resentful towards the other person shining. And so here with the sun, we're letting ourselves shine. And we're knowing that, yes, people will say what they need to say, but in the public arena, in the world, I get to shine. I get to shine brightly and boldly, and I get to be me. And I get to be happy. That's going to be a really big thing, Taurus. We get to be happy. It moves us to the moon. So let us see what the moon has to say for ourselves. Angels and spirit guides, show me clearly. Guide this reading. And show me clearly, angels and spirit guides. Angels and spirit guides. Oh, goodness. Show us clearly. Guide this reading and show me clearly. Angels and spirit guides. Show me clearly. Guide this reading and show me clearly, angels and spirit guides. Angels. And spirit guides, show me clearly. Guide this reading and show me clearly. Angels and spirit guides. Angels and spirit guides, show me clearly. Guide this reading. So at the bottom is our rooted self. Well, you know this already. And we go on. So let's look here at what the moon has to say. It says your hard work pays off. At the root, our hard work pays off. And we and attraction comes forward. So our hard work pays off and we start to attract to ourselves what it is that we need in life, what it is that we want from our lives. We start to attract the energy that our hard work and our dedication has built within us. And it moves us to our inner self, which is be bold and make the first move, darkness. Be bold and make the first move as the moon is covered, as the darkness comes in, as we're looking and seeing and understanding our path forward our emotional self a fiery climax approaches will we have the will for it but what's interesting here is this is the full moon in aries we have a very strong aries presence in our heart at our heart so again if there's aries within our charts if there's aries within our lives these people have a tendency to impact our emotional self but this is also a sense of us being a bit fiery us being a bit tenacious us you know wanting to push boundaries wanting to kind of conquer more wanting to to see and 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 push and and discover and so a fiery climax approaches because we're taking risks because we're going to be inclined towards taking this risk our will our will is being tested our will is is guiding us we have the will for it it leads us to our lunar public arena did I say subconscious with all of this? This is all our lunar reaction, but it, is, it does happen at a subconscious level because we're not aware of the way the moon is calling to us. But it leads us to, again, Aries coming through. And it says here, it's time to take action. And it is. It's time to take action and claim our wealth because we are blossoming, because we are <laughs> turning our faces to the sun and we are letting the beauty and the prosperity come in. We're letting ourselves succeed because we're embracing success. And it doesn't mean that we hadn't embraced success before. We're on a journey. And sometimes that journey just doesn't make sense. If we look back at it, we think, why? But we're starting to blossom into ourselves. We're starting to see the pieces of the puzzle coming together and honoring who we are. It's time to take action. It's time to go after. At our root, we have action. We have the sense of, I am becoming the hard work, the dedication I've put in. It's, it's paying off. This moon, this darkness is giving me guidance. 
and it's making me bold and it's letting me step out of my comfort zone and make the first move towards that success, towards that glory. I'm fiery. You know, in our hearts, we're, we have this fire that needs to shine and it's the will to succeed that comes forward and let us blossom within it. Let us hear this energy vibration. Let us take in this song and this music and let it move us forward. So it moves us then to our subconscious Luna message, which says, luck is on your side. Extremes. But we can take it to the extremes. So we can kind of push the envelope during this time. And we have to be mindful of that because that's where that greed comes in. And greed necessarily, no, I mean, greed is a bad word, right? But it's not necessarily a bad thing to, to want more and to, you know, push ourselves and to, and to like good things and, and to want to achieve. But we have to just be mindful of to the extreme we take it to because luck is on our side. If we are conscious and aware of the way that we're moving forward, if we walk gently and kindly, it moves us to our subconscious energy to be mindful of. And that is the chariot. It's our emotions getting out of hand. It's being attracted to people whose emotions are out of hand. It's the subconscious and the conscious not being linked together. And it's just wanting to barrel through things, just wanting to, to move for the sake of movement or just, you know, it's letting the emotions take over and not thinking things through. It moves us to our subconscious chakra energy, which is spiritual awakening. And this is the crown chakra. We are awakening during this time to so much more, so much more than we thought we would ever be seeing. There's so much more coming to us. There's so much more that we are becoming aware of than we thought we, we needed to, or we thought we wanted to, or we thought was even a part of this world. And so here with the spiritual awakening, we're, we're kind of finding ourselves and that's beautiful. And we're being crowned with that knowledge. Just picture that beautiful crown being placed upon your head of knowledge and intensity and passion and power. It moves us to our subconscious rooted energy, which is the death card. And this is Scorpio energy coming through the dying away of the old self, the rebirth of the new. The sun is very powerful. The sun is very powerful for us during this time. The sun is in Scorpio. The sun <laughs> reflects off the moon. We are going to find that there's just a sense of transformation. There's a sense of secrecy too. We're not going to really want to share everything with everybody. So just be mindful of that, that we're going to be like, okay, once everything is settled, once I have things the way that I need things, okay, then I'll share, but not until then. We are also going to see that we as a human being, we're evolving and changing. It might not always be the evolution and the change that we wanted, but we are evolving and we are changing into something so much more. And it brings us then to our subconscious in self which is the nine of pentacles. It's being in the moment and celebrating. There's beauty around us. Let us celebrate. Let us take it in. Let us rejoice within it. And it moves us to our subconscious emotional message, which is the three of swords. Name the pain. Name the pain and take away its power. The three of swords is heartbreak and pain and disappointment and hurt and despair. And what spirit is saying here is enough is enough. Enough is enough. I get to claim my beauty and I get to be bold and I get to be powerful and I get to move forward in the very essence and the very, you know, distinction of myself. It moves us then to our subconscious public arena message and it's the magician as above, so below. As we believe it, so it becomes. And the fact of the matter is during this time, we're a little bit magic. We are. We have this beauty to us. We have this, you know, insight to us. We have this power to us. Utilize it. Take advantage of it. Let us shine. Let us stand before the altar of our existence and know as above, so below. As we believe it, so it becomes. And we let the spark of magic shine through. We have the sun and the magician and the ten of pentacles in the public arena. My goodness, we're being told to take action because we are blossoming. My goodness, is this time to rejoice. All right, Taurus. I hope this reading has resonated with you. I wish you nothing but light, love, peace, and happiness. May harmony always be with you. I'm sending loving, healing energy to each and every one of you. I love you all and stay safe. Let's end this reading with a meditation, a clearing away of negative energy, a raising of our positive energy as we embrace the power and the intensity of this full moon. So take a nice deep breath in, exhaling whenever it feels comfortable for you.
May you move forward in peace and in harmony, Taurus, and may you have a blessed moon.